Okay, so now we're here in the Abu Anbra Cemetery, which is the largest of the cemeteries that we recorded during the project. And we found 50 of these forms of rectangular gravestone that you can see here. This one's interesting because um, we excavated it, treated it like an archaeological site, because there was a small mound here, which we dug down. There you can see part of the dome where that's collapsed from the roof. There are other parts of the dome over there as well. Once we got the plan inside, you can see it's a small mosque or shrine. There is the uh, mihrab in the wall over there. Here is the doorway coming into the mosque here. And this is a wall that's been built since our excavations that surrounds it here. The gravestone itself is a very nice example. It's the typical rectangular shape. It's got very nice um, mihrab decoration here. So this would indicate to us that the head of the dead person is at this end facing towards the Qibla. It's got the three part decoration that we find on many of these gravestones. That doesn't mean anything in itself, the, the three parts. It's just a decorative element that they use that they used on these gravestones over time. And the date of this one, it doesn't mean necessarily this is the date when the person died, but the date on the gravestone here is 1067 Hijra. So it, 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 it really is a very fine example. And it's also been repaired. You can see that this end was broken off at some time and it's been fixed back on with cement here. And that was buried underneath the mound, as I say. We are now in Abu Ambar in the old country. هذه المقبرة تعتبر واحدة من أقدم المقابر الإسلامية في البحرين ولقد وثقنا فيها ما يقارب الخمسين شاهد قبر هذه المنطقة الآن الذي نحن موجودين بها كانت عبارة عن تل لما نقبنا هذا التل وجدنا بداخله عبارة عن مسجد صغير أو ضريح صغير هذا هو جدار القبلة وفي هذه المنطقة المدخل وفي وسط المبنى هذا المسجد أو الضريح عثرنا على شاهد القبر هذا والذي يرجع التاريخ الذي عثرنا فيه عليه إلى 1067 هجري طبعا هو يعني مصنوع بشكل جيد تعرض لأعمال كسر قديمة جدا وتم ترميمه سابقا الشيء الجميل في هذا الشاهد هو وجود أبيات شعرية جميلة جدا هذا ما نصها لسان الحال أفصح من لساني ومثوى الرمس كاف في البيان لقد كنا كمثلكم سكارى ففارقنا الأحبة والمغاني بس ما بدرتف. This is a, a good example of one of these rectangular gravestones because it's also telling us about the processes of making the gravestones. Um, the stone almost certainly is local and it came from Jidder Island where it would have been quarried and then brought here in blocks and first of all cut into the rectangular shape. It was also hollowed out, there's a cavity in the middle to make the gravestone lighter and then it's likely that these were cut into the basic block for the decoration before being finished. We think that um, it, it wasn't a master craftsman that was making all of it, it was a series of stages involving apprentices that were learning the process. And there were two main master craftsmen involved, one of which was the calligrapher. So this one was done by um, a pair that we know were working on these gravestones, Al-Bahrani, the calligrapher, and Hashim, who was the master craftsman who was carving them. So the calligrapher would have sketched out the calligraphy on it and then the master craftsman would have carved the lettering. They're probably only finishing the lettering and doing the actual difficult parts of the carving with the other bits being done by apprentices. Um, this is one of the completely unfinished gravestones that you can see here, but again it's providing important technical information because you can see the basic way that it's been blocked out. So that this is the rough shape here without any calligraphy on it. And these are the rough shapes that would have then been cut to have that three-part direct decoration that we find on many of them. But we've no idea why some of them were used in this unfinished form. Maybe they couldn't pay their bill, maybe the craftsman that was working on it died, we don't know why these unfinished ones were used.
شواهد القبور هذه الموجودة في البحرين كانت تصنع من أحجار جيرية نقية المصدر الوحيد لها هو محجر موجود في جزيرة جيلة هذا النوع من الأحجار سهل تقطيعه سهل الكتابة عليه وسهل تشكيله فكانت تقطع هذه الشواهد في شكل كتل صخرية مستطيلة الشكل وكانت تجلب إلى جزيرة البحرين من جزيرة جدة ويأتي أحد الخطاطين ليخط عليها الكتابات ثم يأتي فنان آخر لينقش ما تم كتابته ما يميز هذا الشاهد الموجود في مقبرة أبو عنبرة بالبلاد القديم هو أن هذا الشاهد بالضبط يضم اسمين لي اثنين من اشهر الحرفيين او الفنانين الذين كانوا يعملون على صناعه هذه الشواهد وهو الكاتب او الخطاط علي بن حسين البحراني والنقاش السيد صالح السيد هاشم فبعد ان يتم نقش وكتابه كل هذه النقوش والكتابات يتم بعض بعضها وجد عليها انه يتم طلاءها باكسيد الحديد والذي يعطي اللون الاحمر بعض الشواهد ايضا كانت تجوف من الاسفل من اسفل الشاهد ليتم التخلص من الوزن الثقيل لها وبالتالي ممكن نقلها بسهوله اكبر here in Maksha cemetery and this is an important context because this gravestone here is telling us something about the um, time involved in the manufacture of the gravestones. So the person here who's commemorated by the gravestones, they died in 1118 Hijra, but their gravestone wasn't completed until three years later in um, 1121 Hijra, perhaps because you know money was involved or uh, various other reasons that we don't know about. هذه مقبرة المقشع على شارع البداية يوجد بها ثلاث شواهد قبور أحد شواهد القبور الموجودة بهذه المقبرة وهو هذا الشاهد يعطينا نموذج جيد عن الفترة الزمنية التي تستغرقها صناعة مثل هذه الشواهد هذا الشاهد تقريبا صاحب القبر توفي عام 1118 هجري بينما هذا القبر نقش في عام 1121 أي أن الفترة الزمنية التي استغرقت من بعد وفاته أن هذه الشواهد أيضا للمعلومة أن هذه الشواهد كانت تصنع بعد وفاته وأن صناعتها استغرقت تقريبا ثلاث سنوات